Hey there. Come on in. This is the Hipmunk office. So here's our front room right here. Got our newest hire, Andre, and his uh, hastily assembled desk, couch, some boxes for our new furniture. This is where Steve and I work, right in here. Um, both got two desks. They were supposed to be the same color, but Ikea gave us one that was the wrong color. Adam Goldstein and Steve Huffman are the founders of Hipmunk, a Y Combinator startup that's trying to redesign travel search. With only three full-time employees, Hipmunk is just getting started, but they have their sights on some big rivals like Expedia and Google, which recently bought ITA. We got a chance to catch up with them at their home slash headquarters in San Francisco. At school, I had always been the guy who would book my friends' flights, and I would always spend hours doing it. It would take me just so much time to find exactly the flights that met their needs. And so by the time that I got around graduation, I was thinking maybe it would make sense to do this from scratch. So I called up Steve, um, who I'd known for five years since he'd found Reddit, and I pitched it to him and he thought it was an interesting enough idea that we could get started. It wasn't a complicated pitch. Adam basically said, I want to work on this flight search thing. And, and I basically, my reply was like, Okay, like you didn't have to explain that flight search is, is a, a, a difficult thing to do online right now. That's, everybody knows it's painful. So uh, my attitude was, well, I'm not sure if we can do it, but we'll give it our best shot and see how it goes. How did you come up with the way that the search is designed and the way the, it's formatted? Sure, so, so our guiding principle had been, we want to show you all of the relevant flights on one page. Mm -hmm. And to do that, we needed to eliminate a lot of results, and we needed to find a, a compact way to present them to the user to make it easy to understand what the trade-offs are. So you can see a lot of those results, we, we hide like 70% of the results um, because they're, you know, they're just strictly worse than what you could find with other flights. As a user, and also just thinking about the average user who is looking for flights, two of the most important factors is price and the duration of the flight. Right. And right now, it seems like you have a pretty decent database through Orbitz, but mm -hmm. in order to be truly competitive with Kayak and Faircast, for example, you're going to have to really get a lot of others on board. What's your strategy for that right now? Well, I think the sell to the airlines is actually pretty compelling. Mm -hmm. Right now, if they if they uh, you know, list their flights on Orbitz or something, they pay more to Orbitz for the privilege and they, uh, you know, they don't get that user coming directly to their website where they could convince them to sign up for a frequent flyer program or something. And, and of course, we also don't make them compete you know, for, for a, a single dollar in price difference. Mm -hmm. right. When you do a search on, a, on, a, on most other travel sites, since they sort by price by default, if you're not in the top 10 cheapest flights, yeah you are not listed on the first page. So we, com we combat that by sorting flights by agony. Who has the best routes? Who has the shortest flights? Who has the best planes? You know, things like that. When it comes to trying to bring airlines on board and other mm -hmm. people that aggregate this information, what has it been like as an upstart, a company among many other travel startups trying to do what you guys do? It's been very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no, there's no way around that. The airlines get inundated with dozens of calls every month from the next kayak or you know, whoever, whoever thinks that they are. Um, and so they've become sort of immune to pitches from mm -hmm. companies that they've never heard of. So the trick seems to be to get traction with the airlines, you actually have to demonstrate traction. And of course, persistence pays off. Adam has been on the road for weeks and he's going to hit the road next week again probably, just basically barging down the doors of these places to get them to talk to us. Because in the beginning, they weren't, right? That's right. Yeah. You, you know, and, and every Every inch was hard fought for. To help them along the way, the founders have just raised a $1 million angel round from a group of investors, including SV Angel. Dozens of investors approached Hipmunk, but Huffman says not everyone could stomach their high valuation. Yeah, we wanted people who believed in our idea and our team and our goals um, and, and who were willing to, to put down, you know, enough money to prove that they were interested. Mm -hmm. um, enough money to say that you had a fairly high valuation, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, not, we're not a cheap startup. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know if there are any cheap startups yes. left, but we certainly weren't one of them. Mm -hmm. So what was the valuation roughly at? Well, we're not talking specifics. Mm -hmm. we, were, we, were, we had an aggressive valuation, we'll put it that Under way. Under 10 million? Yeah, I'd say something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, close enough. Well, we certainly talked to a lot of investors. Yeah. And a lot of them, to, to be honest, left as soon as they heard our valuation. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and, and so uh, there was definitely no shortage of people who wanted to talk to us. Mm -hmm. um, we're very fortunate in that th there was a few investors that we really, really wanted. You know, mm -hmm. SV Angel is one. They've been super helpful to us. And Paul Buhay, his insight has been you know, very valuable to us. The last thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, the next step for Hitmonk. Um, it's been reported that you guys are looking at different verticals, like for example, hotels or rental cars and that type of thing. But what are you thinking of in terms of expanding the site? How do you want to grow it out? How do you want to think about that strategy? We, we approach, we'll approach the problem the same way, same way we approach flights. We didn't, we didn't sit down on a flight and say, hey, we should present these visually. Mm -hmm. We said, hey, we should make this quit being so painful. <laughs> And so we'll do the same with hotels. And there's, when you think about what is painful about hotels, for example, or for about cars, well, let's, let's take hotels. It's the fact that the listings aren't in any particular order. Um, they're ordered by how much the, you know, the, the search provider is paid by the hotels you know, to display their ads. So that's, that's not very helpful to the consumer. Uh, and there's all sorts of things. You know, the reviews aren't great or consistent across sites. The booking process is, is troublesome. So, the, the specific result of what we'll build, it, it's not entirely clear yet, but we, we are confident in our ability to build a good product. Well, so, so I don't want to get into any, I mean, we haven't, we haven't written a line of code really on, on any of the stuff that we've been talking about, and, and we don't want to overpromise or you know, commit to a certain direction. I think um, one thing for sure, just like we did with flights, we want to show all the relevant results for whatever it is on one page. We think it's really painful to have to click through multiple pages and either keep in your head or keep in an Excel spreadsheet the previous good results that you found. It's just a horrible experience, and we want that not to have to happen. So that's going to be kind of like your tagline in a way, kind of all the results on one page. Or not horrible. <laughs> or, or, yeah, have it <laughs> not, not horrible. That, that was certainly our design mantra at Reddit was, well, hey, it's not horrible. And, <laughs> and, and to an extent, that's uh, our, our philosophy here, which is, you know, not horrible. <laughs>